I want to talk about uh, the blacklist, of course. You know, it's, uh, I'm on I'm on season four, episode five at the moment, and honestly, I've watched so many other series. I've watched Prison Break, Breaking Bad. I've watched all these huge ones. The blacklist is definitely one of the best ones I've seen. Thank you. Out. It's incredible. It's amazing, Thank and you. and the way you act in it as well is amazing. Like the accent you put on is that is that like a tough thing to do? No, it's interesting as, you know, the funny thing is growing up, um, and I remember <clears throat> uh, growing up, especially being um, Muslim, having a Muslim name and being dark skinned, people used to always tease me and call me African, you know, mm-hmm. back in the days it was, I mean, and to some point now it was, it was, it was the thing to do for kids to say, oh, you African, get away, you dirty, or you know, I make noises and, and, and imitate an African accent. So I got teased a lot about that. Um, and I think one day I got offered a role to play uh, an African and it just was in my DNA, you know, just, it wasn't hard to do. Um, and then over time I just kept doing it and it just, it just became part of me. Like I can just go into my accent and, you know, it, it, I can switch back and forth where it's almost effortless now. Um, but it, it wasn't like, it's hard for me to do other accents, <laughs> but an African accent is, is in my blood. It's in my DNA. It's, it was pretty uh, easy for me to do. Wow. That's amazing. Um, what was it like? Like, was the, did you go and, did you know that you were going to go and, you know, you wanted that role as Dembe or like, what was that whole process like to trying to get a, a role in the blacklist? Yeah, I never, um, um, I mean, my dream was to get on a TV show, um, mm. you know, being a firefighter, I always told myself because a lot of my friends at the time were like, hey, if you're serious about acting, everybody's going to LA. That's where the stars are. That's where, and, you know, I had a son. I had bills, I had responsibilities. I was like, I can't just leave up and go to LA. And, you know, and then people accuse you of not really pursuing your dreams or it's just a hobby for you. And it was serious for me, but I just didn't have the luxury of just getting up and leaving. You know, I also had four younger brothers to look out after. So um, I just told myself, hey, I'm gonna work a job. And after 20 years, I'll book a hit TV show. I told myself that. Um, And in my 17th year, I booked Blacklist. Now Blacklist wasn't, they gave, they wanted me to come audition on a Saturday in July. And for for those who don't know anything about acting in the audition process, you never really get auditions on the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Not for serious shows. And then two, they gave me no lines for the audition. So I was really tempted to blow it off. I was like, it's no lines. It's in July. It's on a weekend. Go there, or hang out and have fun. Wow. And for some reason, I said, oh, I'll go to it. I went to the audition. I got it. And I was excited about it. But, they, you know, I also had, you know, I'm, I'm a snowboarder. So I have uh, planned a trip to uh, Argentina to go snowboarding. And... Uh, I was like, okay, I'll do this. And they was like, oh, it's going to cut into your Argentina trip. And I was like, okay, I'll push my trip back a week. And then they were like, hey, you know what? We want you for another episode. And I was like, oh man, I can't go on my, I was really upset about my trip. I didn't care about it. That's how much I love snowboarding. And uh, two episodes turned into 22. And then the next year they were like, hey, we want you to guest star again. And I did that. And then the next year, it was like, they signed me to what they call series regular for, you know, like a six year contract. And it just timed out that that was my 20th year in the fire department. Now, all my life, I had been working. So the idea of leaving, you know, most people even were looking at me crazy when I got on the TV show and I was still working at the firehouse. They're like, oh, you're on TV, you're a big star. Why don't you just quit? And I was like, no, that's, you know, I want to get my 20th year. And then two, I was kind of programmed to get in a check every two weeks. You know, if you've been getting a check every two weeks, 
for 40 years or all your life. And I don't care if somebody says, oh, here's a TV show. I know I was old enough to understand that TV isn't guaranteed. The money isn't guaranteed. One minute you could be on, one minute you're off. Um, so at one point, even at the 20th year mark, I was like, I don't know if I want to leave the fire department. I, I can do both. I'm doing both. I'll keep doing both. But then again, that angel tapped me up my shoulder and was like, hey, you prayed for this. You dreamed about this. You worked for this. The opportunity is presenting itself and now you're scared. Now are we going to walk through the door or are you going to, you know, give in to these fears? So I had to, uh, you know, I had to realize that it was a blessing. It is something I prayed for. A lot presented itself to me and I, I, I closed the door in the fire department and stepped stepped into uh, TV full time. Wow, wow. Um, when you were saying that story, um, you know what came to my mind? I was, I was, I was listening to a, a, an Audible book the other day and they were talking about Jim Carrey and they said Jim Carrey, he wrote himself a, a check for $10 million. Yeah. Put it in his wallet and he said, in three years time, I'm going to get paid $10 million for, for, a, for a movie. And then... Mm-hmm. And then he was in Dumb and Dumber and they paid him the $10 million in three years. It was kind of like crazy because he told himself that that's what's going to happen. And he's yeah. exactly like you, like you told yourself in 20 years, I'm going to be on a TV show. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, one of the things that helped me re- remove the anxiety from, <clears throat> you know, because a lot of, well, I know I had it. And I assume a lot of other actors and entertainers and artists have it is waiting for that big break. When is the big break going to come? Why I can't get the big break? And I read this book um, by Malcolm Gladwell called The Outliers. And in this book, he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. So he basically says 10,000 hours equates to 10 years of work. And his belief is that if you put 10 years of hard work into anything, then you will see some type of success. And I remember in 2004, or 2003, I told myself, oh, wow, okay. If I go to school, if I go to class, if I just focus on training and do that for 10 years, then 10 years, 2014 or 15, I should have some type of success. And that's what I did. And when you look at it from that perspective, it removes the anxiety of waiting for your big break. It's like, okay, I need 10 years of work and then it'll happen. And that helped remove the anxiety. So I just focused on training and training. And in 2013, I got offered a job. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, It's like, you just got to be consistent, right? That's the, yeah. that's the way to succeed for sure. You just got to be consistent at it. Yeah, no, that's Absolutely. amazing. Um, I gotta ask you this question because when I'm watching the blacklist, one of my favorite characters, you know, apart from you, of course, is Aram. Mm-hmm. I think he's so funny. But mm-hmm. you know, when you're around the uh, the cast, who would you say is the is the funniest? Diego. Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Diego is as like Aram is funny uh, in character, and he his 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 character is well written and gets these lovely lines and he's a great actor and he can just mm. be really funny but Diego is like really funny in person <laughs> like he is just a really great guy to have around you and be around he's a funny guy that's amazing yeah oh I honestly like <clears throat> it's something that I don't usually like like to binge watch anything but um because obviously the lockdown, I, I normally at night times, I go and do mixed martial arts. And because obviously lockdown, I can't go. Um, I've just been watching the blacklist constantly. And every time my sister comes to my room, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you know what I'm doing. I'm watching the blacklist, <laughs> leave me alone. 